What if the way you've been telling your life story reveals the secret to what is holding you back? Stories play an integral part in how we see not only ourselves, but the whole world. Stories are more than just an important part of communication. They also reveal hidden aspects of our inner talk, which can either support us or end up holding us back from the very things we want most in life without us even realizing it. Join author, mindset coach, and award-winning singer-songwriter Carrie Rowan on her show, Look for the Good, every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. when she shares nuggets of wisdom from her internationally best-selling book, Tell a New Story, Five Simple Steps to Release Your Negative Stories and Bring Joy to Your Life. Carrie's powerful stories and compelling guests will empower you to change how you look at your own life while giving you some powerful tools and tips you can use every day to help you feel better and move yourself closer to the life you've been longing to live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Look for the Good. I'm your host, Carrie Rowan, mindset strategist and coach, and I just love sharing nuggets of wisdom about the stories that we tell each other, but more importantly, the stories that we tell ourselves. You know those quiet ones right here inside of our heads. Um, so you can join me and my special guest as we share our personal stories of strength and triumph every week on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. You can listen online in your mobile device or in your car or even ask Alexa, hey, play Dream Vision 7 Radio and she'll do it for you. Tune in every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern Time to get real stories and tips on how to turn your story and your life around and evolve with us as we unite humankind with universal love. So thank you everybody for listening in. I can't wait. I am so excited that we have Nicole here with us today. Hello, Nicole. How are you? Hello. I'm so happy to be here with you, Carrie. So happy to have you here today. So Nicole Viegas, I'm super excited to have her on. She's got some incredible wisdom to share with us today. And her and I sort of speak the same language we were discovering on our first call together. Um, and, you know, as, as you know, I dive into the stories, the stories that we all have. And a lot of times our story isn't easy to tell, right? Like we feel like, we want to share it maybe, but maybe not. It's those awful stories, those stories we feel like they've got wrapped around in shame and embarrassment or all those yucky feelings that we don't want to share. But really, truly, those are the ones. Those are the transformational stories. And I know when a client says to me, oh, I really, I really don't want to share that story. I don't feel like I can share that story. When you create a safe place for somebody to share their story, there's so much power in being heard, you know, and, and being seen in our story. And that's what I love to do. That's why you guys, my listeners are always tuning in and thank you for tuning in because we talk about real stuff here. We have real conversations about real stories. And um, Dr. Nicole, as she's known by, um, has some incredible stories. And her and I were just chatting. And, and I want to bring this up because I think so many people feel this way. She had this great idea. She had this, this aha moment before we got on today. And she said, you know, I want to share that sometimes it's not easy to share your story. Like a lot of people don't think they're good at sharing their story, right? This is what right. we were saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, before we dive into that, let me give you her background and then we're going to jump into that because now everybody's like, yeah, yeah, that's me too. So we're going to get right back to that. So um, Nicole is a doctor of occupational therapy. She's a coach and founder of the Sensory Conscious Institute where they put wellness of purpose-driven leaders first. I love that. Purpose-driven leaders first. It's a mouthful but it's a really good mouthful. Nicole's perspective has been featured in Forbes, Reader's Digest, Very Well Health, and BBC Work Life. She is amazing. Her and I know each other from a mastermind that we're both in. And she is just a wealth of information. So let's start. Let's kick off and talk a little bit about that concept. Because I think you said to me, you know, I'm not sure if other people feel this way, but I don't think I'm any good at telling my story. Let's go there. Mm-hmm. Well, a good sign is if you ever think to yourself, I'm not sure other people feel this way. <laughs> it's more than <laughs> likely, right? Statistically, with all the humans on this earth, that there are, you know, at least a few people that feel the way you do, mm -hmm. and probably a lot more than you would imagine. So I'm, I'm grateful to be able to be here and share a bit of my story. And that a part of that is that I never really thought I was good at telling stories. You know, even wow. hanging around with friends, I would I would start to tell a story. It wasn't even the the deepest, most challenging, but then it would kind of trail off. 
And I think that that put an impression on me that, oh, I guess I'm, I just, I don't know how to tell stories. And then when I realized my story can make a difference for other people, you know, that was bringing together a challenge for me. Not only did I go through a big experience and heal, which I look forward to sharing later, but I also was challenging myself to do something that wasn't the most comfortable. And that meant revisiting this belief, this story I had about myself that I couldn't tell stories. You know, it's very <laughs> meta here, <laughs> very layered. But this this story that that I thought, oh, Nicole, well, you just don't really know how to tell stories, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you should study it or figure out how to do that. <laughs> uh, but I, I realized that, no, I am the expert of my own experience. So whatever I say about my story is true and real and will come out just as it's meant to come out. And that's the beauty of story, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to follow a certain pattern. While there are wonderful patterns out there, it is yours. And so however you tell it makes, makes all the difference. You know, the feeling behind it, the journey you went through and the heart that you bring to the table is what makes your story so special. Oh, that's so beautiful. I'm quoting you on so many things in there. Um, that's so beautiful. And you are the expert of your own story. I love that. How could you get that wrong? Right? Oh, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, to, to zoom in and out, if we may, you are the expert of your own experience of your own story. And together, we're experts in community, which to mm -hmm. me means that when we want to show up and share a story or hear a story, we're the ones that make it great. We're the listeners that show up fully, that are there with our person when they're sharing their story. And we're that storyteller who comes from a place of genuine curiosity for your own experience and you tell it authentically because that's your option. That's the option, folks, to be in it together. That is the option. I love that. And that sense of curiosity, I feel like is so important because I'm over here like so curious about your stories, even though I know kind of, you know, the outside of it, but just to hear those inside stories, when you can get curious about what somebody else's story is, all the judgment, all the other stuff that our brain just does naturally because it wants to compartmentalize everything and sort stuff and put it, this is this, this is it, make it easier for us, which really makes it more complicated for us. So when we can kind of get out in front of that and get that curiosity mindset, I love that. It changes your whole perspective of life. Mm, absolutely. And that curiosity is a practice, right? It's not something yeah. that everyone automatically knows how to do. Some of us are wired for it and some of us are wired for it and continue to work on it, right? So as yeah. humans, we're naturally curious. Um, but I do believe that it's when we're curious with each other, those moments of story can be even more enriching. But really that beautiful work is practicing curiosity with yourself. And whether mm. that's telling your story, moving through the day, you know, if you you find you tend to have some anxiousness, or you're going through and are unsure, just reminding yourself, well, I wonder, I wonder what will happen if I, if I go ahead for it, right? Mm -hmm. That's curiosity and action to help you move through your day and do the things you want to do. So this isn't only for story, creativity and expression, you know, curiosity can be of service for ourselves too, through the day, you know, shifting that mindset, yeah. like you talk about Carrie. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that. I have a little note up here. You can't see it, but I have a lot of really good questions. I talk a lot in my book about the questions that we ask ourselves that can be either di really disempowering. Why'd you do that? Why do you always do that? You know, somebody else's voice that got planted in there, or we can start to rewire those. Like you said, I wonder is one of my favorites and I have it posted up here. I wonder, I wonder what I'm missing about this situation. I wonder if the universe was working this all out for my higher good, how would I feel about it then? You know, I think that's really cool to get curious about yourself um, and to watch that, you know, it's that whole metacognition thing, right? Like watching yourself throughout the day. Wow. I feel really awful all of a sudden. Why do I feel so bad? What was I, hold on, let's rewind for a minute. What was I just saying to myself? Oh, 
that awful little insidious story that I had that it's just crept in there when I wasn't even paying attention. And now I don't feel good because I'm reacting, my emotions reacting to what I just thought. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful, yes. beautiful. Yes. And you have that, that practice and noticing your emotions And what I really love to bring to the table, to bring to people's lives and working with my clients is also bringing this, this sensory piece, right? Mm -hmm. As you, in your example, roll back. Okay. I wonder what was happening there. Let's, let's see what was going on. Considering how your nervous system may have been responding to the environment at the time. Mm. Maybe when you roll back, you notice, oh wait, I think I was under resourced. I could have probably used a snack. (laughs) I was probably kind of hungry and wow, was it loud in there. (laughs) So you can notice that there are things happening that your body is filtering. And that goes along with the great Mm. work that you teach, Carrie, around the questioning and the emotions and the mindset, because we really are are a full being, right? We are body, mind, spirit, and connection to those around us, including our environment. Yeah, I love that. And tapping in and starting to understand what your little, like you said, under-resourced, oh, I need a snack, or I'm tired, or I haven't had enough water, you know, whatever it is, my eyes are getting weary because I stand here at my computer all day long, whatever it is for you, you know, and really tuning into that and getting curious, what is that that I'm feeling? Why all of a sudden do I feel like I want to just run out of the building, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Usually it's a sensory thing, like you just mentioned. Yes, yes. And with that curiosity, um, I believe an important part of it, and this is a part of sustainable self-care practices in my model, Mm -hmm. that compassion must also come along with that. Because without compassion, you may be practicing the curiosity and and moving through things. So I wonder, is it possible that this can be different? But if it's not, or if things continue to be challenging in that moment, compassion is what brings that softness, Mm -hmm. right? That allowing you to just be however you may be in that moment, Mm -hmm. because that is the human experience, right? It's not, it's not feeling great all the time. It's moving with the ups and downs. I think together, those Mm -hmm. two along with another one, but those two really together can make a big difference. Yeah. Big time. And I, you know, I tell that to people all the time because when they start getting in and doing this work, they can get mad at themselves. Well, why do I I keep telling that story? There it is again. Right. Or I keep feeling that feeling. I keep, oh, it's so annoying. Right. So when you bring that compassion in, it's a really important part of this work because you need to understand that we're always trying to solve a problem with that behavior, right? Whether it's a great way to do it or not is up for for grabs. But when you can become aware of it, oh, well, I'm just trying to solve a problem here. You can have that compassion for yourself. You know, I always tell people, all right, you were telling that story, but it served a purpose. It served a purpose for a long time. There's always a noble reason behind why we're telling the story, good, bad, or otherwise. And so, yeah, that self-compassion really softens it down and allows you, because we're so good at offering that compassion to others, but do we offer it enough to ourselves? Cause we deserve it too. Exactly. And so many of us who are showing up for others, right? Showing up for others a lot, really caring about the work that we do, whether we're caregivers, parents, professionals, educators, right? There's so many of us in the world with these big hearts and we see, we see our purpose for being here to make a difference. And when you're Mm -hmm. practicing that compassion for others so, so much, but behind the curtain, you may be saying those things to yourself or hard on yourself or wondering, oh my gosh, why am I so exhausted? Something must be wrong with me. Well, that's telling your body and your nervous system, okay, is something wrong? Well, as it turns out, it makes sense. You know, practicing that compassion means that you notice you're a human. It makes sense Mm -hmm. you're going through the ups and downs. And for those of us who care deeply, you know, who are highly sensitive, who are empathic, I'm imagining the folks listening to this right now, a reminder for you today and something to to kind of simmer with is that Mm -hmm. you are full and whole just the way that you are. And by practicing that compassion, reminding yourself of that, you might feel some relief, some of that tension in your neck and your shoulders release, just reminding yourself you are full, you are whole, 
complete just the way you are. I love that. My shoulders just came down a bit. Hmm. They're no longer my earrings. (laughs) 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 I love that. That's a really beautiful thing. And really taking a moment during the day, you know, you mentioned a practice. It's all a practice, right? You know, learning how to be grateful, you know, all these things, getting curious, all these mindsets are a practice like anything else is until it becomes a practice and then it becomes a habit. And then you have to keep doing it because it's your habit and it feels really good. Um, And I love all that. So start to tell us a little bit about your story. Now that we set up that beautiful framework, you have an incredible story. And I know people are going to want to hear their story. They're just not going to believe it. It's unbelievable. And it's just such a turnaround story. I absolutely love it. Share some of that with us. Like I came to this by going through it myself, right? My own journey. I was working hard, loving what I did really in my dream job, working for a nonprofit with a mission that meant so much to me. And I noticed that, you know, the leaders weren't very supported there. And that began to trickle down. Burnout came into my life. I didn't realize it was at the time I was even consulting about burnout. I can see it in my, my colleagues, but for myself, the signs were a little bit different. I think because there's that, that knowledge and awareness, it it came up a bit different for me. Hmm. So while I was healing from that process, I took myself outside. I love adventures. Um, what happened on one adventure though, was that the pressure from the altitude and the heat was too much for my body to process. And I had a heat stroke. Wow. I found myself in the hospital and my brain had swelled. And if we were talking just a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, my speech would have been much, much slower. I know folks that are listening on the radio or the podcast, but this is also available on YouTube and there's a camera in front of me and I wouldn't have been able to sustain a conversation with the lighting and everything going on in my space right now. Wow. So That's I really, unbelievable. yeah, I was really in a space of relearning my senses and I still have some of the, the letters, my vision therapy letters on my wall now. Because similar to these compassion and curiosity practices, continuing to heal from both the burnout and this burnout of a sense in my body. Literal burnout. (laughs) Right? Continuing to heal is a a practice. And I show up for myself every day. Because if I don't, then I wouldn't be able to be here with you, sharing my story, sharing um, things that I do know can make a difference. And I know that because it made a difference for me in my healing. And I ha- there's evidence out there, right? So through that healing from my brain injury, I married together my background as a doctor of occupational therapy and my mm-hmm. lived experience of relearning mm-hmm. my senses. And born of that was the sensory conscious approach. That is so beautiful. And it just makes me think about that quote about, we teach that which we need to learn the most, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yes. it's, it's amazing. I love how you said it was, if you know, you were felt burnt out, but it was, then it became a literal burnout for you that you couldn't ignore. And a lot of the times, right. I feel like the body is like, okay, if you're not going to pay attention to this, I'm going to give you this right until we like, okay, we, I have to pay attention. And I love what you said about showing up for yourself. That is such a beautiful concept as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those messages are coming through. I promise those messages are coming through, you know, our body is letting us know. Um, and, and to be frank about some of those experiences, sometimes it's discomfort going to the bathroom. Sometimes it is that neck tightness, or you notice that you're, you're, you lose your voice before important events where you need to speak, Mm -hmm. you know, or you, you get sick before or after doing something big in your life. Mm -hmm. And your body is giving you these messages and it's when we can tune in and be aware, then we can see them early on and notice, oh, okay, I see, I see that maybe stress is impacting me this way for better, for worse, right? Stress isn't a bad thing. It's information and it helps us to show up for those speaking events, but it can also, you know, over time, put us in a place where our body says, "Mm -mm, 
let's pause. Mm -hmm. For some of us, it's a forced pause, unfortunately. And for others who, you know, listen to the podcast, we're doing this great work. We notice it along the way before that forced pause and can make a difference in our lives. I love that. And, um, you know, oh, we're going to have to break real quick. Don't go anywhere, everybody. We're just going to take a quick little break. And when we come back, we're going to share more of Nicole's story because I know that you're hanging under every word. Hold tight. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Look for the Good. I'm here with Nicole, and we are having the best conversation. Um, I know you guys were really got a lot out of her story, and I just loved, you know, the figurative feeling burnt out and then the literal burnt out you know, that whole way you described, I love the way you described that. And I love the way you talked about how you built your business out of that. And you and I talked a little bit about, um, your sensory conscious model and we already, without even knowing it, have already touched on it. So share with them about the three C's of self-care. I just love how you talk about that. Yes. Yes, we did. We dug in a little bit. So you already know a bit about this. If you, you imagine a beautiful, you know, overlapping puddles of water, you know, like this three-part Venn diagram of, of curiosity, right? How that is its own practice, but it overlaps beautifully with compassion. Mm -hmm. We know that when we're practicing compassion by also being curious, we're really bringing in other opportunities to, to challenge ourselves and see, okay, how can I be, be kind to myself and others in this moment? And that other C there, that third piece is consent. Mm. And while some people may hear that word and have their own connotation or relation to that word, in this space, we talk about your yeses and your noes. Mm. So in the practical sense, consider how you're going through the day. What are you saying yes to? Really? Really think of what you're doing right now. Are you saying yes to listening to this podcast with Carrie? By being clear that you're saying yes to it, it readies yourself and your nervous system to listen and take in what you're hearing. How beautiful Ooh, is that? I love that. I've never heard it said quite that way. Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. It readies your nervous system to take in. Yeah, I love that. It brings you to the present moment, really. Yes. Yes. And so many of those challenging times we may have through the day, just asking yourself again, everything is overlapping. So with curiosity, you know, is this a yes or a no, or, or maybe, or I don't mm -hmm. quite know yet, right? It's that act that asking through the curiosity lens with consent, going, okay, am I consenting to this right now? If I am, how am I going to move forward? If I'm not, how am I going to move forward? And then with a compassion piece of knowing however I move forward is just the way it ought to be. Yeah. I love that. It's, it's almost a little bit of acceptance, right? You know, yes, it's acceptance. Yes. I already, did I say yes or no? And then, okay, so I'm going to move through this, you know, and um, accept that this is what I'm doing. That's really cool. Exactly. Yeah. This and this other piece of the sensory conscious approach mm -hmm. is really looking at our senses. Of course, we can't yeah. have a sensory conscious <laughs> approach without talking about <laughs> all of these senses that are active all day, every day. You know, right now, whether you're sitting in the car or relaxing outside or inside, your body is filtering the temperature, um, the pressure of where your body is hitting the earth or your chair, um, how your insides are feeling. If you're hungry, you have to go to the bathroom, right? All of these things uh, give us information about how we're experiencing the world. Mm -hmm. And those in the way that you currently experience them are your sensory patterns. Mm -hmm. So it's how you are already navigating the world mm -hmm. in these patterns by way of trying to help yourself feel safe and comfortable. Mm -hmm. So if your pattern is to wake up in the morning and and you feel the comfort of a warm mug of tea in your hands, well, your senses kind of took you there. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so when we look at the the patterns that we're currently in, that also means considering patterns that might not be serving us as well. Mm -hmm. And when we look at those, 
we can use information about the nervous system, about how our body integrates our sensory experiences along with those three C's, the self-care practices, to create structures that really help you out. So to give an example, if we're trying to wake up in the morning, you find yourself hitting that snooze over <laughs> and over. It's difficult to get yourself going. Well, there are so many um, ways that your body and your mind might be impacting that moment. But if we can address it with compassion, that means knowing, okay, body, you're coming out of a, a deep sleep or even a lack of sleep and you don't want to get up. I, I hear you. Mm -hmm. That's being kind. Consent. Okay. Am I saying yes to getting up right now? Am I saying yes to the next step in my day? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And curiosity. Well, I wonder what will happen if I just wiggle my toes, right? Use this kinesthetic sense of where your body is in space. Well, I wonder if I just wiggle my toes and my fingers and maybe look around the room, right? Bringing in vision a bit. I wonder what'll happen then. And you might find that your body starts to wake up and getting out and moving into your next step isn't quite as hard as it was the day before. I love that. And I keep thinking of my youngest daughter. <laughs> as <you're> describing. <laughs> She's the 50 time on the snooze, you know, she's like late for everything because, because of that one thing, her body just is not like, I'm a morning person. It's not a problem for me to get out of bed. And she's the opposite, right? Like we're all so different. Um, mm -hmm. and she struggles with getting out of that cozy bed. Oh, so cozy. <laughs> so, so cozy. And, and part of the practice is getting an understanding of where your nervous system is in that moment right? Mm -hmm. It sounds like for you, if you're ready to go, you may be having a sympathetic response. Mm. You're making the most of the cortisol and the adrenaline that yeah. come to us in the morning that are there to help us wake up. Yeah. And in other bodies, they may be in a different state in their nervous system and turning in, tuning in and wanting just to be that burrito in the bed sounds like the best option there. <laughs> And also I feel like, you know, it's the kiss consent piece, being aware of that consent piece, because if you know, you got to get up, but you're saying, if you wake up and the first thing you're saying is, oh God, it's going to be so much traffic or, oh God, I just, I don't feel like it's too cold out. It's snowing, it's raining, whatever, you know, it's those little things you're saying in your head to yourself that wrap around all that other stuff that affect your scent, right? It all is one thing that's happening here exactly. at the same time. Yes. You know, you're firing off. I'm warm. It's cold out there. Your mind's like, it's cold. I don't want to get out. It's, it's a sensory thing, but it's also a story you're telling yourself, right? Exactly. And what I love right now, Carrie, is that I can see you moving your body to tell the story, <laughs> right? So when we start to become more aware and have these conversations, our body chimes in. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. When you talk about staying in bed, your hands come close. When you talk about going out into the day, they open up. So our body is really giving us that reflection of the mindset. Oh, I love that. I talk about that a lot because if you using your body and moving your body is the fastest way to change your mindset, right? Yes. Yes. So give us an example. How could we use our senses if we're saying no to that, how could we kind of mix it up for ourselves? I love what you said. I wonder what would happen if I wiggled my toes, just my toes. I wonder if I put a little toe out underneath the blanket just to kind of test the air, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. You're bringing in temperature then, mm -hmm. right? So you have your body in space, wiggling the toes, and you're getting some some feedback in your body through those joints, the toe goes out just a little bit, bringing in that temperature <laughs> with your eyes if they aren't even wanting to open. I know some of us have kitten eyes in the morning, I like <laughs> to call them. They do not <laughs> want to open at all. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You can move your eyes with your eyelids closed, right? Imagine mm. that you're outlining the walls in the room. Oh, I love that. And if your eyes will open, outline the walls in your room. I love that. You can also bring in this really neat thing about how we're made. You know, our brain is two hemispheres and they're connected in the middle. 
and our right side of their, our brain, our motor system mm -hmm. moves the other side of our body. So when we cross midline, meaning if you have your right hand and you put it over to the left side of your body or vice versa, mm -hmm. you're helping the hemispheres to communicate. So whether you're getting out of bed or say, um, feeling a little anxiousness inside or feeling a little down, just wanting to shift kind mm -hmm. of your state a bit. You're doing this great mindset work that Carrie teaches. You're asking the questions. You want to bring in some practice that you can really do anytime. Consider crossing your midline. And what that can look like is, is right now, if, if you happen to be sitting, put your hands on your lap and then cross them over. Mm -hmm. and you can do alternate taps there. Mm. Right? Similarly, you can cross your, your hands or your forearms in front of your body, put your fingertips near your shoulders and do alternate tapping there. This is one that's often known as um, a butterfly tap or butterfly mm. hug in mm -hmm. EMDR. Mm -hmm. You might find that the tapping rate shifts for you. So if your energy is kind of up and you're wanting to calm down, you know, you're nervous mm. about something, you might find that the rate of that tapping slows down a bit. Mm. Yeah. Did and you notice when I started tapping, I went really fast. Yeah, you were a fluttery <laughs> butterfly. Fluttery <laughs> butterfly. <laughs> I'm excited too, Carrie. <laughs> I'm excited to be here with you too. I do everything fast. <laughs> And after a bit, you might, you might find that it does come down, right? Because what this is, is, is telling your body to communicate on both sides, right? Mm -hmm. We use this practice, um, in therapeutic spaces a lot. And so what I really like is that it's something that you can do, um, and it's up to you, right? You can do it with your legs. You can use your pulse points at your wrist. And just touch your fingers at the opposite pulse point. You can cross your arms. Whatever fits for you, go for it. Adjust as you need. And of course, safety first, if you're listening to this in the car. No crossing <laughs> your later. hands in the car while you're driving. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. And it, you know, the as a, the musician in me is wanting to come out and say, it reminds me of drumming, right? Like when yes. you're drumming with young kids, when I used to have bring all my big drums to a concert and you try and you're, you know, that you can get them to cross midline when they're doing their drumming, you know? And exactly. Exactly. And they don't even and, know, right. Uh -huh. There's so many things they're doing, right? Yes. And adults can do that too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> drum on your pillows. <laughs> absolutely. Drum it out. Right. Um, and also one of the things that I loved is, uh, something called super brain yoga which is where you're crossing and you're holding and you're just doing the squat down. And um, I used to have them do it at my daughter's school. I was teaching it to they, they all thought it was crazy, probably teaching it to the teachers to, you know, that's how you start your morning with some super brain yoga. And it's exactly that, you know, mm -hmm. so exactly. simple, right? Yes. And that, that carrying over what we know about the body, what we know about the way that we think, right? Getting so much from neuropsychology, from physiology, from lived experience, from mm -hmm. our spiritual ancestors, bringing that together and knowing that, yes, these things have been helpful for our younger ones, right? We've seen it to be helpful. Well, it's because it's developmentally based. Mm -hmm. And when we transfer it to the workspace, at least what, what I found in my consulting is that it's really helping our adults too. And that means that they can be well, you know, it's helping our leaders. And that means that they can decrease the risk of trauma for their team. They can decrease mm. the stress in those that they serve. And I think that is so beautiful because if we know that stress and challenge can trickle down, so can ease and happiness. Yeah. I love that. That is really beautiful. We're going to break real quick, everybody. But when we come back, we're going to talk more about equipping our leaders with, with those skills um, so that we can have that trickle down effect in the positive way. So hold tight. We'll be right back with a word from our sponsor. 
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm here with Nicole, and we are having such a fun time. We're talking about the Sensory Consciousness Institute. We're talking about so many amazing things, but don't you just love the way she frames things? She makes it so easy to understand, and I'd love to come in and really talk about, we were talking about so many different things in the break, but I want to come back and talk about, because I'm not sure everybody understands, like when I want to say dysregulation, when you're feeling off. You know, and if you've have ever had a kid who becomes, they, they call it dysregulated, you know how to bring them back into themselves. So, and if you haven't had that experience, let's talk a little bit about that for people doing it. What does that mean? Like we all get anxious, we all get stressed. Um, what does it really mean when our body feels dysregulated or off in some way? Hmm. Well, it's something that I'd like to apply some compassion to first before we talk about it, of course. We move through states throughout the day, and if we zoom out throughout months and years, and nothing is wrong with the state you're in. So if you are feeling dysregulated in that moment, it may mean that you are, are feeling mobilized. You have um, increase of heart rate, right? Your heart is going a little bit. You feel like your palms are sweaty. Your mm -hmm. thoughts might be racing a bit more. You might start to feel warm in your body or, or tightness. That's a, a sign that your nervous system is in a sympathetic state, mm. right? Whereas if it was in a bit more of a regulated state, you would feel engaged, maybe open, present, thoughtful in that moment, connected, some people explain it as, you know, you feel peaceful or you feel light or you're just going through the day. Mm. Nothing, nothing big, nothing bad, <laughs> mm -hmm. nothing super, super great. You're just content. You're going through your day. You're just cruising. Just cruising. That may mm -hmm. be a regulated state. Mm -hmm. And another version of dysregulated might be if you find yourself wanting to exit the situation, like I got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. I want to curl up in a room. Nobody talk to me. I know my heart feels heavy. I feel a bit disconnected. Maybe mm. people don't understand me. I, I feel alone. That might also be a sign that your body is in this, this dorsal vagal state. And I, I'm mm. saying these words just for you to have, if you want to look them up or we can chat more about them, but that this, this numbness or that I need to get away is a, another another way to notice if you're in dysregulation. Mm -hmm. And again, these things don't happen only on their own. You might be both wanting to uh, run away and tell someone what you really think, you know? <laughs> you might want to really use your voice in that moment. So you can be feeling both grief and down and the activity within your body saying, we're going to be um, doing a whole bunch of stuff right now. Mm. I'm right. This is often how yes. we, how we notice it within ourselves. Like, okay, I just can't sit down. I don't know what's going on, but whew, I'm not quite feeling like myself and I can't even sit down. Mm. All right. So that's a sign that you may want to meet your body where it's at. And literally you can stand up and shake it out. <laughs> Love it. Give your body the opportunity to have the tantrum that it wants and it needs. Mm. If you can't yell the way you want to yell, you can hum, you can get out some ha huh, ha's. Mm -hmm. Right. And after that, consider consider giving some some vibration to your vocal cords, which stimulates your vagus nerve, which can feel like humming. Sign, singing, singing, <laughs> yes, finding your instrument, mm. finding your instrument, doing those cross body movements, drumming. So it's this, it. this piece of listening, noticing what's going on in our body, going with it for a moment, allowing yourself to, to move the way it wants to move. That will help you to process it. Mm. And so Love when that. we're talking about what it looks like in the day-to-day -day for leaders, for example, community leaders, folks who are leading their family. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you might be surprised to notice once you start noticing how you move through these states through the day. Yeah. I love that though, because it's just bringing that awareness again, right? Like that self-awareness, 
you're observing your own body and giving you again, we talked about before, like that metacognition, like, oh, wow, look at this and the acceptance of it, the compassion of it, all the pieces. Um, and really just understanding that even in the workday, this is happening all the time. And I feel like for me, I had a lot of sensory stuff when I was in the office because the lights really bothered me. Like those big, huge fluorescent lights. I didn't know it at the time what it was, right? But they really bothered me. I would get a headache. I'd have to go outside. You know, there were a lot of ways. Good thing I was in sales. So I was always out in my car. That didn't bother me as much. But in the office, it was hard for me to be in the office. Yes. Oh, goodness. Those fluorescent lights. <laughs> they are the worst. <laughs> they really get some of us. <laughs> and then they have them at schools too, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you also brought up there was that you were able to change your, your space, right? Going from inside to outside, being in the car, being out and about. I would say yeah. a key piece there that everyone who's listening can do themselves and share it with people in your life. You know, let them know, you know, Dr. Nicole mentioned uh, this thing <laughs> about transitions. <laughs> transitions. <laughs> transitions. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Huge. These juicy moments between mm -hmm. what we're doing now and what we're going to do next. So in that juicy moment, notice, oh, okay, this is a transition. What is the next immediate thing I'm going to do? And again, that's bringing in consent. That's allowing your nervous system to be informed. Mm -hmm. Okay, self, this is what I'm going to do next, right? Giving yourself a clear path. And when you're in workspaces like you described, right? Big fluorescent lights, maybe dealing with office politics or your body really wants to move and you're sitting in that boardroom, but you can't move or you feel as if you can in that moment mm -hmm. for, you know, social norms and all of that. Think about your transition when that time is over. Think, okay, this is a transition. Wow. I really wanted to move that whole time, but I couldn't, maybe this is a good moment for me to just move my body here. Mm -hmm. Jump on the table and lead everybody a little yoga. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the Gary Rowan way. <laughs> I love it. It's hard. I love what you just said, though. You're sort of pre-paving the next step because you're thinking about it in advance. And I can also add a little bit of, you know, law of attraction to that and say, when you're preparing that with a positive outcome, right? all right, my transition is going to be this and here's what I'm going to do. And oh, and you're also creating something that it's, you're looking forward to, right? So, you know, not only instead of the, oh my God, when is this thing going to be over? I can't wait. Oh, another 15 minutes. I can't do it right now. We're not getting consent at all. We're like, no, no, no. And we're fighting the present moment. And when we can get in our minds ahead of time and sort of pre-plan that next step, because transitions are hard for a lot of people, whether they recognize it or not. Exactly. Exactly. They we really are. are aware often of the meetings in our life, of the things we have to do, of the traveling to get there. Mm -hmm. But if you just take a moment, say when you go into that parking spot before you go into the store or getting everyone out of the car for soccer practice, whatever it is, take a moment because that's a transition. Yeah. Take a deep breath. Then move forward. Yeah. See what happens then. I love that. And and the wonder if. Mm, mm -hmm. I wonder if I'll feel better if I can just sit here for five minutes during with that transition time and calm myself. You know, you mentioned dropping the kids off or whatever, because we're always setting the stage with our energy and everything's all energy, right? And so when we're resetting our energy, we're taking that moment, even if it's a one minute little go inside for a second and do a little check on how you're feeling or go through all your senses in your brain. Yeah, I love that. Giving yourself that little moment before you step into that transition. Mm -hmm. It'll shape how you communicate. It'll shape uh, how you're problem solving. You know, it can impact your creativity. It big time. Really, it really can make a big difference. And I'm, again, so happy and excited to be here with you to be able to share it. And I if I may, that. I have a bonus. A yeah, bonus let's do the listeners. bonus. Let's do the bonus before we have to sign off. I love it. <laughs> so we <laughs> talked about the three C's for self-care, right? Compassion, mm -hmm. consent, curiosity. 
We bring in sensory patterns and structures, and this is our sensory conscious framework. But the bonus C that I have for you. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> celebration. Oh, I love it. What a great <laughs> one to end on. Celebration. Yeah. Tell us so, more. Mm-hmm. When you take that moment, Really, couldn't be five seconds. And you just notice, oh, this is a transition. Ah, good job, self. Good job. I, Let me I celebrate love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Up, you show up fully. You share your story. You're making a difference in people's lives. Again, I, I believe leaders are all around us in so many different ways because we're all leaders right? We are leading and guiding. We are following. We are in collaboration all day, every day. And like you said, it's the energy that makes the difference. So if you're showing up for your people, for your family, for yourself, that is something worth celebrating. And I'm over here cheering you on too. Yay. Yeah. High five and <laughs> high fiving you all for listening today because you just learned, I bet you learned so many new things because I just learned new things from Nicole. Dr. Nicole is amazing. And so celebrate that. Every time something like that, every time you can find something good in a situation that is not looking so good and you can spend a moment to say, what could really be happening here? What is it that I'm missing here about this? And you can find that little nugget for yourself that deserves a celebration. And that's what we do here on Look for the Good, right? We look for the good stuff, even in those stories, those cruddy stories that we have to like sort of sweep up off the ground and reconstruct them before we tell them that's okay. That's where that compassion comes in, right? That's okay. But if you can find that little nugget somewhere hiding underneath that, then celebrate away, you know? Yeah. Celebrate. That. We're, we're here celebrating with you because the more of us doing this work, the more we can make that difference. Absolutely. And never think that your story doesn't make a difference. Just like we started off this conversation saying with Dr. Nicole, right? We said that it doesn't matter. You're the expert of your own story. Nobody knows your story better than anybody else. So you can't get it wrong. Don't be afraid to share it. It's a beautiful thing. And then can celebrate after you share it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> High fives for everyone. So share that story. Share a story that you know can help somebody else in their life today and then celebrate that. And uh, and write to me. Tell us about it. If you have a story you want to share with us, go to my website, carryrowan.com, fill out the contact form, tell me about it, or go to my Facebook page. You guys know where to find me. And where can they find you, Dr. Nicole? Tell us where to find you. And learn more about the Sensory Conscious Approach on yes. sensoryconscious.com. And connect with me on all socials at Dr. Nicole OTD. I love connecting with folks on LinkedIn. So you could always send me a message there if you had some thoughts or inspirations from today that you'd love to share. I love that. And I'm going to spell it because we love to spell things on radio. So it's Dr. Nicole, D R N I C O L E O as an OT, occupational therapy, O T D as in doctor. Yes. Right? Yes. So um, find her there, drnicoleotd.com, and you can find out all the work she's doing to help all the leaders of the community and leaders of business, leaders of, like we said, leaders of your own family, right? We're all leaders of our lives. So um, thank you so much for coming on. You are just a wealth of information and it's so fun to talk to. Thank you for having me. Look you're forward so, to next time. Yes, mm -hmm. you're so welcome. We could have a whole nother one talking about a lot more stuff. So, and we will. So stay tuned, everybody. And remember... Go to my website if you haven't already. If you love what we're talking about here, you want to be the first to hear about what the next episode is about, go sign up for my newsletter on my podcast page. So go to Carrie Rowan, C-A-R-R-I-E-R-O-W-A-N.com and click on the little tab that says podcasts and sign up for my newsletter and you'll be the first to know. And I will share insider secrets like Nicole just gave that little last C at the end. And maybe we'll share another little tidbit of information in there. So go there. And remember everybody, before we sign off, it is never too late to live your best story. Be well. Thanks for tuning in to Look for the Good with your host, Carrie Rowan, best-selling author and mindset coach. Join us every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. right here at Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. If you weren't able to catch an episode, no worries. Just visit our website to find all the archived episodes of Look for the Good on demand so you don't miss a thing. And remember, it's never too late to live your best story. 
For additional resources or to find out about how you can work with Carrie directly, visit carryrowan.com for more details.